who is first up with Tony Craig. Duels on his way, Tenduka on strike. Oh, beautifully played, he's off the mark, first ball, wonderful cover drive, into the fence, first ball. Well, what better way to start? Mind you, it was pretty well pitched up, just swinging away a little bit. And what a shot, what a great start to the Coca-Cola Cup. Uh, it may be pitched up, it's still got to be hit, and it's still got to be placed. And this is uh, Sachin Tendulkar's way of saying to New Zealand, welcome to Sharjah. Swung around and way back he went. Have a look at that. That's elegance. And wonderful timing. Full toss whipped away on the onside. This won't go for four. Cairns is down there on the fence. They'll get two. So just looking at the field, quite an attacking field, which has been one of the features of Fleming's game. More shot. Whacked it through mid wicket. Well, his ability to take the ball off the stumps and whack it away on the onside is almost Bradman-like. Well played again, lovely driven. Straight down the ground, it's going to go all the way. Well, he hit that one a little harder. You could see that uh, he decided he wasn't just going to caress that one. It was a little further up and he really did punch it through the offside field. Did that uh, just as uh, Pankaj Roy, another uh, famous son of Bengal, and one of the beneficiaries uh, this year was uh, coming into the ground, coming into what? Thank you, Tony, and the runs continue to come. Four more to the Indian champion. Much to the joy. The supporters in the crowd, so a difficult job here for the New Zealand bowlers. They've got two batsmen in fine form. We see again just angling in towards middle and leg stump, and that's enough for Sachin Tendulkar in the form that he's in at the moment. It has been all year a very productive 1998 so far, both in test matches and one days. Very shiny surface as well. They must obviously use the roller to put that sheen on. Ganguly now joining in his more illustrious partner. That's a cracking shot square of the wicket on the offside. That's brilliant. He just launched himself at that. It looked a more powerful straight. Very warm conditions here in Sharjah and Simon Duell in his sixth over of the spell may be feeling the heat a little bit. Ganguly's had three goes at it this over, the third time lucky. He's timed all three, but the placement this time the best of the lot. Very, very difficult for batsmen, for bowlers, I'm sorry, under these conditions. I sometimes wonder whether. We've perhaps just gone a little bit too far in favour of batting in one day cricket. I still think the game of cricket is best played when it's a good contest between bat and ball and that doesn't really matter whether it's a one day game, two, three, four or five day game. I think it's much better when there is a, a contest between bat and ball and in this, these conditions, the bowlers are on a hiding to nothing. That's good running. Had to motor along there for the last few yards, but as soon as he saw the flick back on the boundary, Tendulkar was racing back to the third. Ganguly finds the gap now. Slower ball from Dion Nash, but not enough to confuse Ganguly. Welcome to the bowling crease. You can't afford the ball, that's short to Tendulkar. What a tremendous hit, brilliant piece of timing. The ball short of a length for a small man. He gets a lot of distance, marvellous timing, and that's a huge six, and the first six of the match wins a $500 US.
award from Kit Ply, and that's gone a long way back. But if they can bat through the next 20 overs without losing any wickets, I think then uh, 300 runs does become a distinct possibility. In the air, mid-off diving. Can't get a hand to it. Back at the end, I think Simon Dewell might have pulled the hand in. The ball fairly crashed into the advertising hoardings. But for a long time, it looked as though Simon Dewell might at least get a hand to it. That was unusual. It just seemed in the end that he was trying to break his fall. was really more over aggression from the batsman than uh, good bowling although you've got to give Harris some credit because he was under threat from Tendulkar but the slower bowler the batsman having to make the pace has brought about the undoing of Sachin and Tendulkar the first wicket for India has fallen in the 15th over with 76 runs on the board This hit very firmly as well. Simon Dool, having uh, not uh, been able to get across to the first one, produced a very important happening there for Chris Harris and for New Zealand. Harris. And a bowler bowling at leg stump, unless it's somebody like Shane Warne who is, is coming from leg stump towards off. But uh, if they're bowling at your pads as a batsman, you're just thinking to yourself, well, might not score as many runs, but it's going to take him a long time to get me out. That's right. You do eliminate the ways of getting the batsman out. Now that's a boundary on the own side for Ganguly. Just using the bowler's pace. Four in each of the last two overs from Nash in that area. That's it, he's played it away, they're going for a quick single, in comes the throw, and they need to hit the stumps. He's asking for a replay, but I really think it was a bit of an after event. He looked to me as if he was home. Well, I think he looked uh, to Steve Buckner as though he was home as well, but... Uh, the New Zealanders kept running around with their arms up in the air and I think without actually saying anything to Steve they put a bit of pressure on him now Azaruddin has had to hustle here and uh, it's no wonder they were running around with their arms up in the air well um, a big sigh of relief and uh, a big cheer for Ganguly who's brought up his off century and uh, not least of the relief people out there will be Ganguly himself who's called his skipper for what turned out to be a very very tight run you see it's a bit it's been a bit of a, a bit of an up and down business isn't it really and 10 for one Nasty play, that'll run away. This is a fast outfield. Will it get to the fence? I think it probably will. Oh, lovely shot. He waited for that and played a very well executed back cut. And down the riggedy goes. And so the Indians again showing how they love to get down the pitch to the spinners. And they play them so well. This will be a huge test of a priest. This is his third over. No wicket for eight. He hasn't done badly so far. 
Well, what was all that about, do you reckon? Ganguly has clubbed it away through extra cover. It was an easy two there. And uh, Azra then looked at him and then just put his hand up. Yes, one gets the impression uh, on occasions that uh, Mohamed Azraddin doesn't like running too much. Pretty warm out there. He's very laid back and uh, probably has a, a, a figure in mind. But you, I agree, Richie. He should have been coming back for the second there, putting a bit of pressure on the fieldsman. Oh, and it's got through the field as well. This one will go to the fence. They don't have to worry about uh, charging up and down the pitch. Into the fence it goes. That's his eighth boundary. Oh, he's hit that one down the ground. That's going to go all the way. It's a big six. Straight down the ground. Into the crowd. Well, it's hit the roof, actually. Well, who said he couldn't hit it? He's absolutely smashed that one straight down the ground. And it's gone all the way for six. Well, there's not much of him. A slightly built left-hander, but he times the ball magnificently. He's lost it at the moment, too. Eventually, it's retrieved from the crowd. His footwork was good there. And when he was a little bit short of the ball, he didn't panic at all. Just hit straight through it. Close. That's a very good effort. Chris Harris, umpire Steve Bucknor is calling for the replay. Well, this is going to be very close. Chris Harris is a magnificent fielder. And this is a real smart piece of fielding. Just how, just look how quickly he comes in here and gets rid of the ball. And this is going to be very close. We'll have to take another look. Zeruddin might well be short of his ground. Well, Ganguly played that with very, very soft hands. So Harris has, uh, has got in there quickly. And then the direct hit is the important part. Yes, it looks like the bat's on the line. The bales are up out of, the, uh, out of their slots. Ganguly really played that very softly. That's terrific work by Chris Harris. And so often you find that direct hits lead to a dismissal. The bat was on the line there. It'll be interesting to see whether the third empire gives the decision in favor of the batsman. But the rule says that if the bales are off and the bat is on the line, the batsman is out. That looks out to me. But that's not the. In fact, he has been given out. So the red light finally coming on. India losing the second wicket thanks to a superb piece of fielding by Chris Harris. Skanguli plays this very softly. What's the way he just drops the ball at his feet? So he did everything right, but he was just outfoxed by Chris Harris. Big breakthrough there for New Zealand. It's 148 for two. I say a very important period of play simply because uh, the ball's just not coming on to the bat. And if the New Zealand bowlers bowl straight, then the boundaries are going to be hard to come by. We've got a new man in, in the form of Navjot Sidhu. It's important now that the Indians run hard. Well, that's got to be fairly close. Yes, yeah, Sampar Bucknor says that's in line and it's going to hit. Well, Lovejot Sidhu was getting a little frustrated out there. In fact, I think it was the last over that really brought about his dismissal. But here, looking to work the ball on the onside, playing across the line, and that would have crashed into the middle and next stump. No doubt about that. Pretty simple decision for Steve Buckner. Sidhu gone, India one. The inform RJ Jadeja at the crease. He walked out, did a couple of stretching exercises as he was walking along. 
made him look as though he was uh, the minister for silly walks. But uh, he's in very, very good form with a terrific record in one-day cricket. This was man of the series uh, against Australia in the triangular tournament. Rather, not only Australia, Zimbabwe also competed there. And for a man who comes in at number five or six in the batting order, that's a very, very good average. Oh, I think. It's a good piece of feeling by Simon Dool. Jadeja will certainly smarten up the running of uh, Ganguly. He's an excellent runner between wickets, the right-hander. And with the amount of basketball seen on television these days, it's not a surprise that you see young kids uh, wanting to play that sport. Jadeja looking for two, but the New Zealand outfielding has been very athletic. It's in the air, there's a fielder out on the boundary, running around, he'll take the catch. So a very important breakthrough here for the New Zealanders. Horn, the fielder down there at mid-wicket, takes a comfortable catch in the end, and that's a great breakthrough for New Zealand. Indeed it is, because uh, Ajay Jadeja is just the kind of batsman who can uh, accelerate uh, the scoring in the last uh, overs. He was in fact trying to do the same, very good uh, bowling there, very good field placing there by the New Zealand captain Ajay Jareja is out for 17 and India 190 for 4. I think New Zealand have done very well here to just peg back the Indians, 195 for 4. And Stephen Fleming has done a good job, especially with his field placing. The bowlers have backed him up by bowling straight. He's hit that one down the ground, he's going to be out caught, yes he's caught in the deep. Well that one's gone flying away down to long on, Simon Duell down there, he was never going to drop that. Well I think he put a little bit of extra pressure on himself. There we are, the, uh, the slightly hung head there, I think things just start to slow down a little bit and uh, he felt that he had to go for this, let's have another look at the shot, off the meat of the bat. It just seemed to stop on him a bit. Didn't quite middle it at all, and Simon Duell had a simple catch to take. He gave a quiet wave to the New Zealand supporters. India lose another wicket, their fifth, 195 for five. Anjita Garkar, just 17 years of age. Real exciting young cricketer. A challenging time to come into bat as he gets the single right now that's over to Ganguly again right the cheers start he's on 99 he'll be looking for a single here get this hundred out of the way and then really start uh, playing a few shots haven't quite got enough runs lovely evening in Saja Ganguly on 99 he's made two one day international hundreds so far in his career will this be his third Well, now, did he get a bit of bat on that one? Touching down, having a little look over at the umpire, and yes, he got some bat on it, so that's his 100. Well played, Gungrily. He's really kept it going, and uh, he's made his third one-day to national century. Well, he deserves the applause he's getting. It's been a very, very well-paced innings. He's kept his cool as well, especially when New Zealand were coming back into the game. And the important thing for India is that he's still there. Boys, oh, it's that one. It'll go to the fence for four. Well, that's what they've got to do now. They've got to take chances. And uh, if they do, they might just get luck going their way a little bit. That's the end of the over. 25 for five. That's right. And uh, if New Zealand do get off to a good start in the first 15 overs, then uh, the Indian captain, Mohamed Azizuddin, will be under pressure. Only that is a slower ball. He does it very well. 
bowls it with an off-spinning type uh, delivery action, and uh, that certainly was a good one. It was right up there and straight, probably just came back a little bit out of the rough. Pretty full it was, so Cairns has struck. And uh, another wicket has fallen. Have a look at this one. Well, that's beautifully bowled, and that turned a long way. A fastish off break, deceived Agarkar, who was giving himself room to smash it through the offside. And New Zealand doing a really good job here. They picked up the sixth Indian wicket, 211 runs on the board. So nine Mongia, India's wiki keeper batsman, out to bat with a score on 211 for six. Just one ball to go in the other. Oh, and uh, that is a quicker one, just outside off stump. That well, gives you some idea of um, the way Chris Cairns mixes them up. First of all, a wicket with a slower one, and then a quicker one to finish the other. Well, that was beautifully bowled. A slower delivery that turned a long way as well. Straight down the ground, it's going high in the air. This will be caught as well. Yes, he's got it. They've caught well in the outfield today, New Zealand. How the fieldsmen down there at deep mid-off, they haven't actually looked as if they're going to drop any of those big hits into the outfield, and that was no exception. How making the catch. Well, they're a very good feeling side, and uh, again, a case of an Indian batsman succumbing to the pressure, frustrated, going for the big one, and the ball really not coming onto the bat, and a simple catch in the outfield. Kept his eyes on the ball nicely and took it comfortably with two hands. So Nayan Mongi out, not tickling the scorers, 212 for seven. Oh, he's bowled him. First ball, right up in the block hole, and that's the end of that. You don't get many better balls than that. Right up in the block hole and dead straight. And so uh, the man who's caused all the problems, his innings has come to an end. Well, if there's any youngster watching on how to contain a batsman who's gone past 100 in the final stages of the innings, he's got to see the ball that dismissed Ganguly. Well, the first man to be dismissed was Nan Mongia. He was out in the last over, holding out in the deep. Comfortable catch for the man at long on, on the fielder there. And uh, the second one, the one after that, the century maker Ganguly. Right up in the block hole, crashing into that middle stump. So good hand for Ganguly, he was out for 105 of 140 deliveries, he held the Indian innings together. Batsmen have just got to go for it, one has to feel a bit for Players like Nye and Mongio came in, they've got very few overs to do anything. They've got to have a go, and of course, they could very easily get out. So that's the end of a very tidy over. Very timely one as well. 214 for eight. So three balls to go in this innings. Direction, two balls to go. Right up in the block hole, nicely played down the ground. They'll be looking for two, but the fielding's good. Oh, no, they've, uh, this is a fun ball. This could be out. Cairns has got him. Yes, run out. Well, the idea was right. Cairns missed it. It went through to the backup fieldsman. In fact, I think it was the wicket keeper there. Did a really good job. Perore got around, and he managed to flick it back to, back to Cairns. Let's have another look at it. Well, good backing up here. It's because of this uh, misfield there by the bowler. The batsman wanted a single, but the keeper did a superb job there. He was quickly off the stumps, good throw. And Venkatesh Prasad was short of his ground. So another wicket gone here for India, 219 for nine. Cairns the bowler, and uh, he's managed to get a single. So the end of uh, the Indian innings, and uh, I suspect New Zealand will be very happy with this. They've got to make 220 to win now, 220 to win. The pitch is good, 
Ravi, however, we might just see some dew. It's a bit hard to tell at the moment, but that could make a difference. It could make a huge difference because we've seen this is a very slow track. India have got two spinners in their side. And if they get off to a start where they pick up a couple of early wickets, then they're definitely in with a chance to win the game. But uh, like you mentioned, if we do have some dew, then it could be in New Zealand's favour that. Because uh, the ball will come off the bat, then it will skid off the surface. And if New Zealand get off to a good start, then there'll be problems for the spinners. India got to 220 in their innings. Sachin Tendulkar getting a 40 from just 41 deliveries. Saurav Ganguly, the centurion, is 105 coming off 140 balls. The rest of the batting crumbled against some steady New Zealand bowling. Dion Nash picking up 4 for 38. Craig McMillan 1 for 34 from his 9 overs. And all the rest of the bowling looked pretty decent. The target for the New Zealand, 221, and they need to get to that total. Nathan Astle is at the non-striker's end. Struggled a bit in Australia, but uh, he started to find some form when he went back to New Zealand. I think he prefers the lower bouncing pitches, so uh, this should suit him. Edged and taken. So Agarka has got the breakthrough. A very good outswinger. Batsman here was drawn into the shot there. You can see the late movement. It was a little wide, and all he managed to do was edge it to Nan Mongia. He made no mistake. Just the kind of start India needed. Howell gone for no score, and New Zealand had lost their first wicket. Zealand losing a wicket in the first over. Chris Cairns is the new batsman at number three. Lorne Howell sucked in there by the outswinger and got the edge. Well, that's a very, very good delivery by Agarkar. He's a confident young man. Yes, it was interesting to note the Indian fielders uh, really charging in and clapping every time that uh, he bowls. Oh, was a good delivery. That won't help him too much. Jardasia unable to stop that uh, cover drive. That one's driven on the rise as well. Two boundaries in this over so far as uh, New Zealand start to go after Prasad. Well, it's uh, funny how a misfield... Uh... And the ball going to the fence can really take the pressure off the batting side. Oh, now he's got a wicket. That'll do a lot for his confidence. And right through Chris Cairns. And this should do wonders to his confidence. And he said he needs a good match. And this is a terrific delivery. Now that really spit it off the deck. This is surprise Chris Cairns. Look back a long way. This is more like the Prasad, you know. The ball is delivery at win in England. Classic delivery. Looks back to middle stump. 24 for two. New Zealand skipper Stephen Fleming, who's uh, had a bit of success of late. Made a very good 100 uh, New Zealand's last match against Australia in Australia. Got his team uh, to a victory over Australia, but he's got a lot of work to do now. Seeing, especially seeing his move of putting uh, Chris Cairns up the order. Ashton is on the charge. Edge and he's gone. So Prasad gets his second wicket. Mongir his second catch. They certainly are in big trouble. And then Kadesh Prasad has certainly tightened things up. He's not given the batsman room. And again, this was a ball that was too close to Astle's body to try and attempt that shot. 
He could not free his arms, only managed to get an edge, and man Mongia made no mistake. So wicket number two for Venkatesh Prasad. New Zealand in big trouble, 33 for three. Matthew Horn batting down the order for New Zealand. Quite often opened the batting in recent games. He's got a bit of a resurrection job to do here as New Zealand are in trouble at 33 for three. Well, that got uh, exactly what it deserved, a full toss. He was going for the Yorker and Fleming was on the way forward anyway. Yes, this really is a gift. Uh, and this will have taken the pressure of uh, New Zealand to a great extent. Uh, they had been tied down by some very accurate bowling by both Prasad and uh, Agarkar. This will have taken the pressure off. Beautiful stroke, but hardly have been hit straighter. Two in the one over. That one was wide enough to go for the drive through extra cover or even cover. But uh, in Australia, Fleming started to play straighter. Instead of playing across the ball, he started to hit it down the ground just like that. Oh, this is a terrific shot. This is a terrific shot. You really cannot uh, set a field for a shot as straight as this. Captains keep a mid-off, they keep a mid-on, but you really cannot keep any fielder in front of the side screen, can you? Ball's gone down to the boundary, thick edge from Kumbhle's bowling. Flew very quickly to the left hand of Azradin. Kumlay bowling very tightly as usual, very quick through the air. He's a tall man, around about 188 or thereabouts centimetres. Comes down from quite a height. Horn gets it away fine, and that's going to beat the fielder into the boundary. So that's one of the boundaries Tony was talking about. If they can just keep the pressure on the bowlers, working the ball into the gaps for the ones and twos. The boundaries will take care of themselves as the bowlers become frustrated. And really, uh, just judging by that last one, very little movement there. His foot tends to come down pretty straight and then doesn't really pivot around. Just watch, the, watch his left foot as it comes down the front crease. There we go now. You can see it's almost dead straight and just a tiny little pivot at the end. He was down the pitch trying to play it away and uh, really without any confidence at all. And so India have got the wicket they wanted. Well, not necessarily the wicket they wanted, but they've got a wicket and they needed one too. So Matt Horn out, stumped. Horn advancing down the wicket, beaten in flight here. Some good bowling from the young fella. A little bit of drift in the air. And the ball seemed to straighten up. And Horn well and truly st stranded. Mongia. Not under a lot of pressure to take the bales off, so the fourth wicket falls for New It's high, and it's long. It's a nice stroke. No uh, great amount of smash, but uh, time perfectly. Good player. Fifty to Stephen Fleming. Well, this has been a terrific innings uh, for his side. Uh, he came in when three wickets were down. 
and it took the initiative uh, straight away counter-attack hitting uh, Venkates Prasad for a couple of boundaries and he's the man that uh, the team will be hoping will stay right till the end shouts of catch it but it's well wide of Habajan and unfortunately a great piece of fielding has come to nothing bounced off Tendulkar onto the stumps and uh, I think a reaction from the bowler as soon as it hit the stumps he appealed in the outfield just short oh and a real blunder that's uh, Agurka there uh, making a real blunder in the outfield that's the 50 partnership and he'll Kumble back into the attack he's bowled five overs for 20 Edge, no slip. And really, with India needing wickets, that's probably a blunder. Ah! That's well bowled. Now, Mongi has got them off quickly, and I have a feeling that Stephen Fleming may have just lifted the toe. The, man, the, the question is whether it was uh, when the bowls were coming off. Well, this is another piece of brilliant wicket-keeping by Nayan Mongia. He's picked the one that is going to go straight through. Stephen Fleming, the New Zealand captain, he didn't pick it, he played for the turn. There it is, Stephen Fleming playing for the turn and uh, Nayan Mongia whipping the bales off in a flash. That uh, that's can't tell us very much from there, and Stephen Fleming may get a lucky break. Yeah, he has. It's just wide of the outfielder. Well placed. That's into the gap as well. And that's a good start to the over for New Zealand. Well, that's in the air, but it's well and truly over mid-off. One bounce, four. Up, and he's got him. Kumbhai takes the catch. That's a very, very good catch, and that could well be the wicket that uh, turns this game in India's favour. Yes, that's a big wicket for India, coming just at the right time. Fleming have done all the hard work, was looking to chip this one over the infield and Kumble here times his jump to perfection. Slow delivery, played a little early and that brings about his downfall. So the New Zealand captain dismissed, New Zealand lose their fifth wicket, 170 runs on the board. Chris Harris, the left-hander, has been sent in to join Craig McMillan. The reason he's out there is to replace his captain. Brilliantly caught by Kumble at mid-wicket trying to chip it over the slower ball just deceiving him enough Kumble timing the jump to perfection brilliant catch he's given it out a very very important wicket McMillan's out for 49 and the young fellow struck again that could well be a decisive blow for India now well the Indians are hanging in there every now and then when you feel that New Zealand are Inching closer to victory, a wicket falls, and now the game is nicely poised. Looking to rock the ball on the onside here, missing it, very similar to how Navjot Sidhu was dismissed earlier, that would have hit the stumps. No problem for Steve Buckner there to raise his finger, in fact Javed Akta, 184 for 6 New Zealand. The experienced Adam Perore comes out to join Chris Harris, so New Zealand fortunate to have these two experienced players out there in this situation and Perore gets away to a flying start it won't go to the boundary Jadeja moving around no in fact it's coming around from backward square leg no I was right the first time done it again has he got the edge he's given it and that is a very important wicket for India and they are right back in this game now New Zealand losing the important wicket of Harris, and Kumble picks up his first wicket of the innings. 
Well, Chris Harris, when he was out there, was never comfortable against the spinners. He's got the crowd to their feet with his dismissal. A tentative poke here. Really was a nothing shot. Took the outside edge, and then Mongia made no mistake. So the Indians here right back into it with a chance of winning the game. 186 for seven. Dion Nash comes out to replace Chris Harris. Kumble picked up the wicket, very well caught by Nayan Mongia. And all of a sudden, the balance in this game has swung back to India. New Zealand requiring 35 from 39 balls. So as Dion Nash comes out to replace Harris, we've got Tony Gregg and Sonny Gavaska. Thanks, Greg. Yes, uh, I suppose. The thing that swings it in the favour of uh, India now is the fact that there's seven wickets down. So they only got three in hand. This is the wicket again. It's a good catch. That one bounced a little bit. Beautifully taken by Nayan Monga. And uh, I think everyone realised that he was out. And uh, just a little smile on the face of the umpire, umpire Buckner. He really does have a lovely manner. So it's turned out to be a pretty good match, Sonny. Yes, it has. The Indians have fought back well. They have uh, kept their call in spite of the fact that they didn't have a big total to defend. And even during those partnerships uh, between the New Zealand captain and the others, uh, they've kept their cool. 187 for 7. Uh, Darker, 9.5 overs now. 3 for 35. It's been a good performance by him. Very economical and uh, he's picked up three wickets as well. Yes, he's improved uh, with every game that he's played. Uh, he's learned... Uh, you can see that he's added this lower delivery to his repertoire. He's got a very good in-swinging Yorker. Ball in! Clean ball in! What a magnificent wicket to get, just when it really mattered. Well, he's had a wonderful day. Ends up with 10 overs, two maidens, four for 35, and uh, an economy rate of 3.5. And what an important wicket this is. Let's have another look at it. Well, we were just talking about that uh, in swinging Yorker. He's got it on target and he's knocked uh, the stumps of uh, Dion Nash. That is a very important wicket. Uh, Dion Nash capable of some big hits. New Zealand now in trouble, 189 for eight. So Mark Priest is the new batsman. Oh, is it there in the air? This is going to be out court. Got it. Yes, he's got it. all or nothing. Tadeja down there in the deep at mid-wicket actually ended up taking quite a good catch. Just misjudged it a little bit. Ended up catching it about a foot and a half off the ground. And so New Zealand now have lost their ninth wicket. The crowd are loving it. Let's have another look. Well, he's only a number 10 batsman. He's doing what he knows best and that is to try and uh, play the uh, shot around the cow corner. And Ajay Jareja coming up with uh, a very good catch. Started off slowly, but uh, recovered. Mark Priest out for a duck. New Zealand now nine wickets down for 190. Well, Simon Dill's out there. That one's short. It's pulled away down toward Ms. Wicket. They'll get one. And uh, so that means that Duel will have to face the music. This is the 46th over. Long way forward. It is 25 of 19. Can they pull off a minor miracle? Oh, it's a good shot through the covers for four. Well, eight runs off the over. That's a good over for New Zealand. 200 for nine. Okay. 19 of 16. All of a sudden, uh, there's no slip. Loves working it away, plays the sweep shot well, likes to play those little inside-out shots on the offside, looking for one every ball. A sensible cricket, this uh, by Perore. Yes, it is. Uh, having seen Simon Dool play that uh, extra cover drive, uh, he's uh, not afraid, not shy of giving uh, Simon Dool the strike, hoping that maybe if he can hit yet another boundary, 
Nice to that one through the offside as well. Back for the second. In comes the throw and comfortably home. Then New Zealand would uh, be very, very close. Their bowlers were just too good. It was important that New Zealand got off to a good start. That didn't happen because they lost their three wickets for just 33 runs on the board. Stephen Fleming, the New Zealand captain, got 75 of 97 deliveries and Craig McMillan got 49 of 66. The rest of the batting struggled. Agurka was the pick of the Indian bowlers. 4 for 35 for the fast bowler. Prasad picked up 2 for 48. 3 for 39 for Anil Kumle, the leg spinner. Harbhajan Singh, the off spinner, bowling well as well, picking up 1 for 32 from his 10 overs. So India won this encounter by 15 runs. Man of the match was Ajit Agarkar for his fine bowling performance.